What's good folks, it's Nightmare Frame here with an exciting new video. I'm going to go over an old favorite of mine, Harrow. I did release a Harrow build back in the days, but I never really went into detail on the things he can do. So this video will be going over his abilities, what he excels at, and taking a look at the crazy builds. That's right, builds, meaning more than one. Four amazing builds that you should definitely try out. He's a support and utility frame, so does that mean Hero can be picked up by any new player easily and perform well? Absolutely not. You do require some experience with the game and how the abilities and modding work. This video will focus on different ways on how Harrow can be played, for your basic player to a hardcore player. A part of Harrow's kit revolves around sacrificing for gain, meaning you lose something to gain something greater and devastating in return. For a better understanding, let's have a look at the abilities. His first ability, Condemn. This is where Harrow throws out a wave of energy that binds and immobilizes enemies. They cannot move or attack and they are left vulnerable for your attack. When this ability affects mobile enemies, you're granted additional shield points, which turns into overshields if they're maxed. This also helps you restore shields when you have none. The amount of shields you're granted scales of power, how long the enemies are CC'd scales of duration, and the reach and distance scales of range. The second ability, Penance. This is where Hero whips himself silly to sacrifice his shields to grant him increased fire rate, melee attack speed, and reload speed, and also provides him with a lifesteal aura. So any damage done by Hero heals him and allies within his affinity radius, so you don't need range mods to heal allies. The duration of your buff scales off the amount of shields you have and duration, so having a lot of shields helps retain your penance longer. So the basic combo is using your condemn to grant your shields and activate your penance to increase the duration of the buff. Thurible, his third ability, Harrow swings his whipping chain stick and channels and stores his energy into a buff. While channeling this ability, you cannot shoot, cast any other ability, or pick up any loot. You can deactivate the channeling by casting it again, and enemies killed while this buff is active grant you energy. Also, enemies killed with headshots grant you even more energy. While this buff is active, you will have a ring-like aura around you, and any ally within this ring is granted the same amount of energy you gain. The amount of energy you gain does scale of power strength. And finally, his fourth ability. This is what Harrow is needed for in Eidolon Hunts, Covenant. Harrow spins like a majestic epic ballerina and grants everyone, including himself, damage immunity for a certain duration. And after the invulnerability phase, all damage taken within it grants every player retaliation, a buff that increases your weapon critical chance. Now this ability is useful to protect yourself and allies from any incoming damage. You cannot cast this ability again until the retaliation buff runs out. All of Harrow's abilities and their animations can can be sped up by the use of natural talent. So if you're planning on running with Harrow, I highly suggest to not go anywhere without this mod. So let's get on with the builds. The first build, which is the group build. This is where you will try and hopefully support your allies before they actually kill everything. The thing with Harrow is that you have to do the killing to be the support. So try your best. In the aura, I have corrosive projection, but you can honestly run with whatever you want. And since Harrow is a damn good weapon specialist, a great aura for him would be Speed Holster, where it increases your weapon holster speed by 120%. My range is at 160% with the use of Stretch and Cunning Drift in the Exilus. This increases my Condemn's reach and my Thurible's aura radius by 32 meters. Power strength is at 144%, and trust me, you don't need insane amounts of power strength to play Harrow. This grants me 7.2% lifesteal aura, 50% fire rate, a 50% fire rate increase, and a 100% reload speed. Duration is at 179% with primed continuity and auger message. This gives me 11 seconds on Condemn's CC, 63 seconds on Thurible, 11 seconds of invulnerability, and 22 seconds of retaliation. Vitality for some health and minor defenses, redirection for your shield pool to increase the amount of duration you gain from penance. Primed flow for a good chunk of energy. Harrow's energy pool is quite sad, so this helps him cast all of his abilities. And efficiency isn't needed at all since you gain back so much energy. This is especially if you have base efficiency. And finally, the mod that speeds everything up, Natural Talent, 
for 50% casting speed on all of his abilities. Now when you want to play solo and survive and just do your own thing, here's a build for you guys. This will increase your defenses and healing along with utility. The aura is speed holster for 120% holster speed. Great for going back and forth super fast between your weapons. And Vigilante Pursuit in the x list to grant me a 30 meter enemy radar. Great when playing solo to spot enemies and helps with enemy pathing. And let's not forget it's part of the Vigilante set which increases critical hits done by primaries. Vitality for health, redirection for the shields when buffing yourself with penance, primed continuity bringing the duration to 155% which grants me 9.3 seconds of condemned CC, 55 seconds on my thurible, 9.3 seconds of invulnerability, and 18.6 seconds of retaliation. Blind Rage for a good chunk of power strength which increases my lifesteal aura to 10%, 69% fire rate and 139% reload speed. Natural Talent for casting speed and finally Adaptation for some added defenses. Streamline and Flow for the energy pool and efficiency. I'm using Streamline this time because of the negative efficiency coming from Blind Rage. Alright, for those Eidolon Hunters out there, and anyone getting started in Eidolon Hunts, Harrow should be the first role you would get acquainted with. His role is very simple and straightforward. And for more information on this role and Eidolon Hunts in general, do check out my Ultimate Eidolon Hunting Guide series. Links will be in the description, where I go into detail explaining everything from gear, role, and pretty much all the requirements along with tips and tricks. Now that aside, let's take a look at the build. The aura is Corrosive Projection, because in a proper Eidolon Hunting Squad, you're going to have 3 Corrosive Projections and 2 Coaction Drifts. This provides the squad with 98.9% .9 Armor Strip on the Eidolon's armor for your radiation to deal bonus damage on the Synovias. Now if you didn't get any of that, do check out the Eidolon Guide series. Now, having negative duration is important with Eidolon Harrow. The sweet spot is at 89% duration, with a max transient fortitude and a rank 3 auger message. This gives me 5.31 seconds of invulnerability and 11 seconds of retaliation. And like every hero build, natural talent for the casting speed, streamline and flow for the efficiency and energy pool, but you don't really need the energy pool, you can replace this with speed drift for even more casting speed. Rolling guard is a lifesaver, giving yourself 3 seconds of invulnerability when you dodge roll. Vitality for some health, and handspring for that 160% knockdown recovery because there there will be a lot of knockdowns in Adelon hunts, and if you have Prime Surefooted, I suggest taking that instead. And for all the heroes that complain that, oh I can't fit Handspring and Coaction Drift in one build, that's a dumb excuse, and you should be smacked. Alright, of course, you're talking about Nightmare Frame here, and he likes to take things to the next level, and basically turning our hero into Super Saiyajin Goto. <laughs> but this requires a second hero. Do you have to do this? No. But this makes it perfect to create the ultimate immortal umbral hero. He is tanky, undying, and has all the self-sustain he could ever want. I mean, seriously, let's be honest, this build isn't needed. But it is hella fun, and when Hero Prime is released, he will get the umbral juice for sure, as this build is damn insane. The aura is Steel Charge, it's just so that I can get that extra mod capacity, nothing else. And since this is an Umbral build, I decided to go for all three Umbral mods for the additional health, armor, and power strength when all three are combined. Primed Continuity for the duration, Handspring for the knockdown recovery. As I always say, spending less time on your ass keeps you alive longer. Natural Talent, the bread and butter of any hero build. Flow for the energy pool to help cast all the abilities with ease, and finally adaptation for that 10% chance to gain 90% damage resistance towards status effects. Powerful and deadly, and very simple. When your penance is active, any form of attack will heal you, so you can be very aggressive and turn into melee hero. And yes, you can also get headshots with melee. Now the best focus school I recommend running on Harrow is Vazarin to increase your affinity radius with Mending Unity. This is only outside of Eidolons though. And with Vazarin, you're given even more invulnerability with Protective Dash. And the reason I don't use Lasting Covenant in any of these builds because you never need it. You're losing out so much when it comes to defenses. 
having the ability to cast your covenant when you actually need it is so useful. And sometimes enemies don't actually hit you so you don't get the buff and you have to wait and cast it again so you can keep it running. I feel it's better to just not run this augment at all. And for me personally, the best guns for Harrow are Amprex, Fulmin, and Catchmoon with the Pax Seeker Kit Gun Arcane equipped. These three are quite devastating. Amprex with the Chain Lightning able to ping multiple targets. Pack Seeker Catch Moon headshots will lead to even more headshots. And the Fulmin offering two fire modes that feel very powerful and devastating when wielded by a buffed hero. Also, not needing to worry about the ammo. Oof, alright, these are my hero builds for pretty much every situation. So guys, do not underestimate this deadly priest. Alright folks, this has been it for me. I do hope you've enjoyed this video, and if you did, feel free to leave a like, share, and subscribe for more Warframe content, and so much more, do refer to the description. Thanks for watching, and as always, peace. Close to the sun